Hey guys. What is going on? You ready for another update? Ooh. Check this out. The Crypt Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I started out with just cutting some three quarter inch plywood, some CDX, stuff you can get at Lowe's Home Depot. And I gave myself a base to start with. I, I then made a box, uh, just a plywood box that I shot together with staples. So then I just started attaching foam that I cut in a table saw or using our hot wire cutter and uh, shaped it, glued it down with uh, some expanding foam and then uh, uh, added a, a couple little details. I had some scrap wood that I just ripped down to like a three eighths by three eighths or quarter inch by quarter inch. We had some dowel, some closet rod dowel that I just cut a hundred thousand times and shot those on to give it a little extra detail. Well, another detail though that I wanted to add to this one was a lot of the pictures from real uh, monuments and tombstones and crypts and stuff, they start out with like a brick uh, base layer and then they, they build their slab and stuff on there. So I wanted to give it a, um, a brick detail and then Gina can paint it differently if she wants to. Now the, the plywood does add a little bit of weight to this thing. I kind of like that because then it's not so lightweight it'll blow off and stuff but you can have the it off to the side maybe you could add a mechanism on there i think it's um, too heavy for that unless just, you did pneumatics right or yeah yeah but i mean wiper motors are pretty tough but you're right like a pneumatic you could you could rig it with a you know what i like the best what bug yes you could put <laughs> lights or fog in there lights absolutely and fog is my favorite yeah all right, so I'm working on the top of the lid to the little crypt, and uh, I've got a couple different uh, two-inch thick foam sheets that I'm working on. This one is the very top. Using the table saw, I just set it at 28 degrees and then ran the each side through the table saw, cutting the angle. Then I took a tape measure, and I measured down like an inch and a quarter, and using a straight edge, I gave myself some reference lines. Now I have this uh, little scrap piece of like two inch uh, wood dowel and then I put an 80 grit sandpaper on there and what I'm doing is I'm just carefully staying within my lines and I'm giving myself a curved contour uh, and I'm gonna go do that all the way around and then I'm gonna shape the this side going the other direction it's a real easy technique to do and it'll give you that crown molding look uh, instead of just being a straight angle nice because those lines really help as long as you still see them you know you're safe so the next thing to do is just round over this portion so for that I'm just gonna use some sandpaper loosely so you can see I got the curve going on there a sanding block may help uh, speed the process up but basically we're changing this to create the full curve The last thing that I did is I just added a few different um, ding marks, like where it would have gotten right. chipped up Chips. over the yeah. year. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, again, just like the mausoleum, no, nothing like crazy detailed, but enough detail to give it a little bit of interesting, Whatever, you know. Chris. What? I'm saying, uh, no, I didn't. Like I could have like put let a lot more steps. Not in too there. much detail. There's all kinds of stuff going. Well, on you know. We do have some of these leftover um, resin decorative pieces that were from a, like an old Lancome commercial that we worked on. You know, they're br busted up, so it might work out perfectly. We'll, we're thinking about it. We probably will cover this thing in some foil, do some hard coating, uh, spray it with a, a concrete uh, a render, or, yeah, or some mortar, and then Gina can start her painting and aging. <laughs> We attached all those decorative pieces using a lightweight auto body filler. Then we added texture to those pieces by dabbing on a little dry lock and mortar mixture. This is our above tomb crypt. Ooh. I spent all day yesterday aging it. Again, it has a base coat and then it's got some dry brushing, but this has the black, green, the brown mixed in it. 
and I like to walk away from it. I want to have some really, you know, nice black drips and runs in here. So I'm not going to water down the black as much because I really want that to stay. The watered down has kind of blended, which looks really nice for a base, but I'm going to come back in there and do a little bit of that. But I've gotten in all of the edges and cracks and even on the lips and stuff like that. So I think this one is almost good. I have been working on the lid as well. And as you can see, you know, I started doing this. I had to stop yesterday on that. So I've got a couple more things I want to do to this as well. And then I'll probably put the lid back on there and maybe do some consecutive yeah stuff. no i love how all your wash went into these little pits that looks yeah it looks pretty pretty good yeah and right the there. green is a mixture of three green colors so i'm crazy i'm kind of like a mad scientist yeah i'm creating colors and stuff but i think that's a nice base it looks like the moss might just be starting to form on it gives it some break up from the stone and the black and then of course you can tell the brown is all blended in there too just kind of break up that black a little bit yeah it looks great yeah.